Howdy diddly do people! Moving forward with our game, let us start spawning the enemies in the game so the player can avoid them and all of the good stuff and uh, yeah, this is getting awkward, let's get into the game. So the first thing that we need to do is go here in the scripts folder, I'm gonna right click over here and use C sharp script, make sure it's a C sharp one, let's go over here and I'm going to call this one gameplay, so gameplay. And make sure that you attach it here on the gameplay game object. So script, empty, load. We're gonna go under scripts and I'm going to select the gameplay. So first of all, let me just double click it and open it here in Visual Studio. While we are waiting to open our script and giving space and all of this here, if you want to try out my academy, you can do that for two bucks. Link will be in the description below. One month access for two bucks just to try it out. And if you like it, you can stick with it. If you don't, well then, don't. Simple as that. So here in our gameplay, and we can inherit node, it's not a problem. We need, first of all, an export variable. It's going to be a private packed scene. And we are going to have the green zombie. So green zombie, red zombie, and the ghost. I'm a ghost, 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 ghost. And what is the next step? We also need a private vector too. Spawn underscore left. And we also need, and here, of course, I'm going to say new vector too, like this, and we need spawn right. This is the position where we are going to spawn these game objects or nodes or however you want to call them. Let me just go over here first and I am going to take, let's take the red zombie and put it over here. So somewhere around here we can start spawning. This is on the left side, by the way, so the Y axis can be 455. So here I'm going to say comma 455 for the Y on both here. So comma again 455 for the Y. And let's go back. So for the left side, it's negative 5,010. Or simply it could be 5,000. Ah, it can be 5,000. So let's go over here and put it. So what did I just do? Command V to paste it, okay? So negative 5,000, this is for the left side and for the right side, we need to go back over here and I need to take this bad boy. So let's take him and put him over here. Positive 6,390. So here it can be positive 6,390 F. This is where we are going to start spawning these. Or actually, 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 let me just go back probably here 6,090 because let me just make sure where is the bounce for the monster. So yeah, yeah, it can be negative 5,090. Let me just go over here and see negative 5,000. Yeah, it can be like this and here 6,390 because here is the positive 600, 6,650. So yeah, this can do. So these two are going to be our these are going to be where we are going to spawn these enemies. And in order to spawn them, we need to create a function. So I'm gonna go over here, remove this, and I'm going to call this a void on monster spawn, underscore spawn like this. We are going to spawn the monster. Now, how we are going to do that? Well, it's gonna be very easy. First of all, here I'm going to say int a random enemy. So rand enemy, it's gonna be equal to new random like this and I'm going to say here next from zero up to three. This is going to return a number between zero and three, but not including three. So it will return zero, one or two. And here we're going to say switching case and here I'm going to pass my random enemy and based on the case, so the value case can be zero like this. So case zero and like this and below we need to say break. We're going to have case one and case two. So here case one and here case two. Of course, here at the top, we need to say monster, and I'm going to call this one new monster. So new monster is gonna be equal to null, like this. And depending on here, if we have case zero, we're going to spawn a green zombie. So we're going to say new monster is equal to green zombie dot instance as monster, like this. And here below, I'm going to duplicate this, and this is going to be the red zombie. And here below I'm going to duplicate is, and this is going to be the ghost. So depending on the random value here from zero up to two, so zero, one, or two, we are going to either spawn the green zombie, the red zombie, or the ghost. Them ghost, 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 ghost. Anyways, what we are going to do next is here I'm going to say vector two temp is gonna be equal to, or simply declare it. And I hear my fans going crazy, and not fans like you are my fan, but here, let me just go show preferences. 
and I'm going to put them over here. I think this is okay so that we don't hear them and I don't have to edit this and all of the annoying things. So the next thing that we need to do over here is we're going to again randomize here. I'm going to say new random and I'm going to call here next from zero to two. If that number is greater than zero, we are going to spawn to the right side. So here spawn to the right. Else, if this number is not greater than zero, meaning it's a zero, so else here below, not packed scene, but this over here, come on, what are you doing? Like this. Else, we're going to say here, spawn left. So what's gonna happen here is you're going to say temp is equal to spawn right. And here we're going to say temp is equal to spawn left, like this. But also here, if we are spawning, to the right side, our enemy needs to start moving to the left side. So what we need to do is we need to say here new monster dot move left is equal to true. Why? Again, if I go over here, you see if we spawn him to the right side, this is on the right side. You see this is our player and this is the right side. So our enemy needs to start moving to the left side. So that is the that is the reason why. So let me just remove this. Okay. And practically the Last thing that we need to see here is new monster dot set position. We are going to pass here temp and add the child, new monster, new monster, and voila. Now we can call this here in the ready function. So I can spawn it here, calling it in the ready function. Let's go over here, command B, just to see if this actually works. Will this work? Will this work? And we have a debugger. Let me just see. Oh, you see here? Notice we have a null reference exception. And the line where we have it, it's 31 and 15. Let's go in the 31 and 15. So 15, this is the line over here. And 31, okay, let me just, okay. You see, this is where we had that problem. Now, the reason for that is this. I need to go and select the gameplay. I need to attach these. So here for the green zombie, drag and drop, attach the green zombie. For the red one, drag and drop, attach the red one. And for the ghost, drag and drop, and attach the ghost. I'm a ghost, 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 ghost. And I'm going to command B now and everything works but pay attention now we are going to have a monster either from the right side or from the left side okay here he is so he is pawn we it works but we only have one that is the issue we only have one and in order to spawn more we need to call this function repeat repeatedly over and over and over again so let's do that so right click here on the gameplay and I'm going to click here, add a child node, this is going to be a timer. We need to go back over here and this monster spawn, let me just remove it, I'm not gonna call it in the ready, I'm gonna copy this name on monster spawn because I'm gonna go here, select the timer, go under his node and signals and select the timeout, connect the signal over here at the gameplay, so connect that signal and name the signal on monster spawn and hit connect. But we need to select the timer again, go here in the inspector. I'm going to say, let's say every two seconds and auto start on its own. One shot, don't check this. If you check it, it will be only called once. If this is not checked, it will be called over and over and over again. So let's see that. And I'm going to hit command B. And now we should see monsters spawning from both sides. And every two seconds, we're going to have new monsters. Okay, this is a ghost, ghost, I'm a ghost, 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 ghost. We can probably move the move the Y axis a little bit lower so that the ghost is not that. But you see, we have one issue here, one issue, another issue. So we have issues here, okay? We have issues, as you can see, and our game is lagging and all of the good stuff, you see? Okay, we will see how we can fix this starting from the next video. But what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna go back and probably not four, five, five. Let me just take the ghost and position him over here. Where's my ghost? No, not the child of the timer. Where is the ghost? Here he is. And move the ghost over here. Move a little bit down, something like this can do. Transform here, it's negative. So, oh, actually for the Y, not the X. Here I'm going to say three, five. So five, three, five. This is going to be our Y. Or actually, yeah, our Y. So here, negative five, three, five, five, three, five, so that the ghost is lower, a little bit lower to the ground. Anyways, this was our, this is, well, all for this video. We're spawning the monsters. In the next video, we're going to detect collision between the monsters and the player. We are also going to see how we can 
avoid collisions between the monsters and all the good stuff. If you want to try out my Game Development Academy, you can do that for just two bucks, one month pass for two dollars. If you want it, go get it. If not, good luck learning game development. And I will see you guys in another video.